In 2017, Todd Gurley finished as RB1. 2018, on a per-game basis, Todd Gurley was well, RB1. And yet here we are, entering the 2019 season, and Todd Gurley's ADP is, is 9. Huh? I mean, what am I missing here? Yeah, I'll tell you what you're missing there, Barry. Uh, let's see. Hair, a sense of humor, a good job, good breath. Uh, knowledge of fantasy football, a good yeah. co-host. You want me to keep going? No, or? no, no. I, I get the yeah, Anyway, I get the, I get here, listen up. Thank Everybody yeah. is talking about this girly kid that's saying he's washed up. Hey, you know how I got no friggin' arms? Yes. Yeah, Gurley's got no friggin' knees. Dear up the bum. <laughs> no, straw man, no. Okay, yes. Gurley's knees are a concern, right? And those concerns mean that the Rams will manage his workload this year. There's no question about that. But that news, along with his end of the year and playoff performances, have, well, fantasy managers concerned. And I certainly get it. But Todd Gurley getting around 15 touches a game in a Sean McVay offense is still a top five fantasy running back. Remember, in each of the last two years, Gurley has led all running backs in red zone fantasy points, and it's not close. In that stretch, he's got almost 50 more fantasy points than the next closest guy. Gurley will still get almost all of the Rams running back touches in the red zone. And even assuming Gurley gets less overall work in the run game, he's insanely efficient as a receiver. Over the past two years, he leads all running backs in yards per catch at 11.1. He's tied for second in receiving touchdowns. Not all those running back catches will go to Daryl Henderson. Oh, by the way, believe it or not, even with a poor end of the year performance last season, Gurley still averaged 4.9 yards per carry last year, actually the highest mark of his career. Could Gurley's knees get worse? Of course they could. But injury is a concern for any running back. Gurley's days as the top back in fantasy might be over, but he is no, by me, no means a bum, okay? He's my RB5 or RB6 if Ezekiel Elliott reports. So, did I at least convince you, straw man? Yeah, you know what, Barry? You actually did convince me. All right. You all convinced right. me that listening to you is worse than sucking oatmeal through a bendy straw. <laughs> Dear up the host. I don't have bad breath, for the record. So a huge question heading into fantasy drafts is this. What do you do with Ezekiel Elliott and Melvin Gordon? Now, obviously, if you're a time traveler making a brief pit stop here in August 2019 to watch a streaming puppet show before heading to the years 2016, 2017, or 2018 to play fantasy football, a common time travel occurrence, incidentally, I say 100%. Draft Elliott and Gordon. You'll be very happy. And if you're traveling to a future where Elliott and Gordon have both reported, Elliott is my RB2. Gordon is a top 10 running back. But if you're here in the present, on August 22nd, 2019, all I can say is that I feel like you can feel more confident taking Elliott than Gordon. The fact is, Dallas needs Elliott way more than the Chargers need Gordon. Last year, Ezekiel Elliott accounted for a league-high 36.4% of the Cowboys' scrimmage yards. Meanwhile, last season, the Bolts went 4-0 without Melvin Gordon, and they averaged nearly the same number of points in those games. Austin Eckler and Justin Jackson clearly capable of filling in for Gordon. Eckler is a mid-round target for me right now, and Jackson a late-round pick without Gordon in uniform. But in a future where Gordon reports, Eckler becomes more of a RB4, 12-team league flex type with some handcuff upside. Jackson basically undraftable except in the deepest of leagues. Okay, back to the present. With Elliott still holding out, I think you have to get some Tony Pollard late in drafts. Ton of upside, obviously, if Ezekiel Elliott were to hold out all season. But if Elliott does report, Pollard merely a handcuff for whoever drafts Zeke. With our own Ed Warder reporting today that they're willing to make Elliott one of the two highest paid running backs in the NFL, I'm much more confident that they'll eventually come to terms with Elliott than the Chargers will with Gordon. Look, I can't predict the future, but if Elliott falls to you in the bottom half of the first round, I'm confident you can pull the trigger. And if you draft Elliott in the first round and he doesn't play all season, I just want to say that it's his fault, not mine. That's true for the present and the future. My top four running backs entering the season and my top four players in fantasy overall, Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, and David Johnson. They are the four people on my 2019 fantasy football Mount Rushmore. Daniel, get it, where are you? Four guys, Rushmore, I'm talking about guys who rush more. Mount Rushmore, four guys, get it? Do you yeah. get it, four guys who rush more? I get it, Matthew. See my face? Yeah. Looks like stone, like on the mountain. It's because you're a terrible joke. So mean. Anyway. Matthew, 
You want to know what other, another reason why I'm not laughing? No, what's David that? David Johnson. How is he? He's in your tier one. Do we have any idea if Cliff Kingsbury's offense will even work in the NFL with a rookie quarterback? Have you lost your mind, Matthew Barry? Have you lost your freaking mind? Okay. I'll explain it to you, Daniel. But move. There we go. Just a little way. Perfect. Okay. Look, while Johnson is behind Barkley, McCaffrey, and Kamara, I am taking him ahead of Devontae Adams and DeAndre Hopkins. Look, you know what you're getting. Okay, it's consistent volume with David Johnson. His past two healthy seasons, he's averaged over 21 touches per game. And the talent is obvious. Since David Johnson entered the NFL, he has scored in over 55% of his games. And that includes his rookie season when he was primarily a backup. And by the way, I just love his fit in this new offense, Arizona, going to play at a much faster pace this season. Remember, in three of Cliff Kingsbury's last four seasons at Texas Tech, his team ranked inside the top 15 in terms of running back receptions. Johnson's elite pass catching ability is why I'm not concerned about Arizona's offensive line. Remember, people use the bad offensive line argument as a reason not to draft Saquon last year. And like Saquon, I expect a lot of DJ's value to come from dump off passes as pressure comes in for Kyler Murray. For all those reasons, Daniel, where are you? Daniel, yes, I am confident in David Johnson as a tier one running back. He's my fourth ranked player overall. What do you say, Daniel, did I convince you? Uh, yes. Yes, you convinced me, Matthew. I really, I really care about everything that you just said. Look at this video of a cat riding a dolphin. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> super That's cute, cute, isn't it? That was adorable. really cool. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, guys, thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more great ESPN streaming content, download the ESPN app and subscribe to ESPN+.